the major prophet of God is here right now inside the United States of America. I want to say that all that has happened has happened and has come and gone. And it is time for permanent interest. And what is the permanent interest? We want the will of God to remain done. We want God to continue to bless his people. We want the Americans, the people of America, to remain blessed and remain favored. We are not here for any confusion. We are here for blessings of God to continue and to continue and continue. And uh, why we are saying the blessings of God must continue is because any country that seeks God is my country. You see, the reason why we all are praying and also asking God the will of God to be done in Nigeria is because there are people that want to serve God without any hindrance. People want to serve God without anything debarring them or any restriction. People want to serve God with all their heart. They want to serve God with all their spirit, soul, and body. This is the reason why we are praying for things to get better. But for somebody to rise up and say, oh, you will not serve this God. You must come and serve my own God or I must kill you before you know or you change to serve my gods. That cannot happen. And so we that believe in Christ Jesus and we are praying to God of heaven, any country that believes and they're praying to God of heaven with all their spirit, soul and body. I'm not talking about occultism. I'm not talking about voodoo. I'm not talking about uh, trying to practice one occultism or the other. I'm talking about serving God with all sincerity of heart. Serving God, our creator that created us in his own image. He has a way that we must serve him. He said there's no other way that man will be saved except through Jesus Christ. And you cannot make any other way of salvation. He said there's no salvation in any other but in Christ Jesus and Jesus alone. And I want to say to people in America that God is welcoming all of you, whoever you may be, whether you are non-believer or you are a believer or you are whatever they call you, Jesus has opened his hands. And because he opened his hands, he's saying to all the people, sinners or whoever you call yourself, he said, come unto me, all ye that have labored and are with heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest and I will give you peace. And why is he calling all the people to come unto him? He's calling the people to come unto him so that he can transform their lives. Jesus wants to transform their lives. Jesus wants to do something new. And that is why... Uh, whenever you see me praying for America, I am not just praying for praying. Say, I am praying that the position that God has given them, that they will not misuse it. They will not lose their position. They will not fall out of their position. America should pray never to fall out of the position that God has put them. Because in the realm of the spirit, in the spiritual world, the Lord opened my eyes and I enter into the realm of the spirit and I begin to see people that are preparing world power to come and scuttle the power from the United States of America. But God said, pray for them. Stand in the gap. Because why? There are people that want to allow everybody be free to serve the way you want to serve. And what did Joshua say? Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. If it is the gods of the other land that your father served in the other side, choose it and serve it. If it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, choose it this day whom you will serve. And he said, for I and my family, we shall serve the Lord God Almighty. Because we know that there's only way that lead to heaven. But every other person will say, oh, there's a way that I like, I want to follow. And the Bible says, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of that way is destruction. But the way that seemeth right, which is the way of the Lord, God Almighty, every one of you, whoever you are, we must all do everything possible to remain on the right track with the God Almighty. And this is why I am here today to raise prayer for the United States of America. I am here today to bless the government and declare that the government must not fail. They must succeed. And it is called a permanent interest. And none of us and nobody on earth will ever pray that this country will fall. But for the enemies, they want the country to be scuttled down. And this is the reason why when the, the, the political whatever was going on, I never ceased in prayers. I was praying because I know the devil has already made a way to cause confusion but everybody and every stakeholder must take whatever pain or whatever belief or whatever thing that has happened to him or her they must take it to heart and forget about it for the interest of the country to move forward because the enemy prayed and the enemy led what is called lying in wait waiting for america to make mistake 
And they waited. Oh, if this country can make a mistake, they will scuttle the power from them. But God said, continue to pray. This is not an issue of one individual or issue of persons. And you can never ever say, oh, this one is what I hate. This one is what I love. The only person that has such a decision is God Almighty that says, it's what I hate. And Jacob, I love. And for we that are prayer warriors and we that are people of God must stand in the gap to pray. Most especially that the will of God will continue to be done. Because there are thousands of people that are praying to God and they want God never to abandon the country. Because the kind of government that is already in place is to continue and let everybody be free. Let everybody be free, live a free life, do what you want to do to the glory of God and serve your God. It's not something of forcing people or something of trying to push people into what they don't want to do. But people must be allowed to exercise their freedom of speech, their freedom of living, and the freedom of everything. This is why we are praying for America. This is why we pray they will never make mistake. This is why we pray that the country must always remain on the right track with God. You know, sometimes you may come to a position, or maybe you have one kind of a plan of your own. The man proposed, but God Dispose. Why did God dispose? When God look at sons of men, he will laugh from heaven and God will do whatever he wants to do because the heart of the kings and the heart of the leaders and the heart of all the people, the president and whoever in the world is in the hand of God. So I want to say to everybody, our prayer must not fail for the United States of America. We must pray 24 hours 7 and let us forget the past and push on. Because pushing on is what will bring the light we are looking for and we are praying for. But I want to say to you all over wherever you are, the world we are in is not the time that the devil can take over. No devil can take over. No power can take over. No enemy can say no. No power can subdue the earth for now. Because I'm a major prophet of God. God remains in charge. Until when the hour comes. Jesus said the hour and the time. No, no man. Except the father who is in heaven. And why is the father the only one that knows it? The father knows when things will come to an end. And that time that things will come to an end. That is when the father will say okay. I want to allow anything to happen anyhow. But for now. God is still in charge. God is still in control. God is still the leader of heaven and the earth. God is still the keeper. And the keeper that keepeth Israel, he never sleep nor slumber. And the same keeper that will keep America and keep all the citizens and keep all the people for peace to reign. And the same God that will keep us and protect us for peace to reign. So, so many people ask me a question. They say, yesterday, Major Prophet, we want you to prophesy. We want to know how this thing is going. We want to know what is going to come of the impeachment. For the impeachment, I don't want to say much about it. But one thing I want to say about it is that God is in charge and God is in control and God is not true. God will continue to do what he and he alone is able to do. But most important thing that is very, very important is that the people must not lose their position. Financially, economically, mentally, politically, and otherwise, they must not lose their position. So that that position God has put them, they will stay in that position to be able to intercede for the rest of the world. And then another person began to ask a question. He said, Major Prophet of God, he said, oh, I want you to begin to pray the same prayer in the country, Nigeria. Yes, we are prayed and we are prayed and we are prayed. But right now, the prayer is let the will of God be done. Let the will of God be what? Be done, for God knows it all, and God knows what is the best. And when God knows what is the best, God will always give us the best. God will always give us the best, for the best is what is best for us. Apart from the best, we need nothing. Apart from the best, we don't need anything. Apart from the best, we are not interested. Apart from the best, we don't tolerate any other thing. What we tolerate and what we need is the best. And what is the best? That the will of God may be done, whereby we all may be protected. Whereby we all 
may know what we have and share what we have in common whereby we all may sit together as brothers and speak one language whereby we may all sit together and say yes this is the way forward where we can discuss and our voice will be heard where we can discuss and everybody will be seen as very important not where we can be seen as animals not where we can be slaughtered not where we can be thrown into the dustbin not where we can be neglected and harassed and threatened we want a situation where we can all sit together and discuss with our own dialect you discuss with your dialect they discuss with their dialect and we move on to what is best for us that is what we pray for the perfect will of god not the will of man and you see, when the will of God is in place, nothing any man can do about it. Sometimes people say, oh, I'm the one to do this, I'm the one to do that. Man has nothing to do. Only God that calls the man, that anoints the man, gives the man the mandate and says, go ahead, do this. Remember what the, the, uh, the enemies of Israelites were coming to destroy their crops. They were coming to destroy their crops and destroy everything they have. And the man called Gideon was afraid. Gideon never know what to do. And he was there going to the farm, going and coming back. And the Lord said, go in this thy might. Go in this thy might. And the moment the Lord said, go in this thy might, the Lord gave him the strength, gave him the ability, spoke to him and encouraged him. And he picked up 10,000, I mean, how many thousand men, footed men, want to go for war? And God said, no, not this people. Drop them. Take them to the river. Give them a test. The people that pass the test are the people that will go with you. At the end of it all, how many people passed the test? 300. And God went with the 300 and was able to conquer the enemy and brought victory for the Israelites. That victory is what we are praying that the will of God may happen for us to possess our possession. Some of you are praying and crying to God. God bless me. God favor me. God lift me up. And it seems as if your prayer is not answered. I want to tell you that in this might and this opportunity God has given to us, whether the enemy like it or not, heaven must open for God to reach out to you in the name of Jesus. Whoever you are, are you watching me from Europe, South America, North America, Asia, uh, Middle East, uh, Australia, or Europe, or wherever you are watching in Africa, my prayer for you is that heaven will locate you and God will do a super miracle in your life and the world will see what God has done in your life and they will glorify God in your life and no more will you struggle no more toiling, no more struggling in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray that all those doors that we are closed against you before heaven begin to open them the Lord begin to open them Jesus begin to make the way where there is no way. I don't know where you're watching me. I don't know what is in your body. You are having a pain on your body. From the back, from the back, down to the waist. It's paining you seriously. And this is something they call as if it's like a spinal injury. I pray for you that heaven will come to your aid. I see the Lord stretch his hand and pull you out of that very spinal injury. And the Lord begin to heal you. As the Lord begin to heal you, you are totally delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs>